So we've seen how to fit data to a power law, how to start with a data set and determine the optimal exponent alpha and the optimal x min. And we've also learned how to assess the goodness of fit we get after we've done this procedure. How good a match is the power law to our actual data? So uh, this unit so far has been all about power laws. But here's the thing, not everything in the world is a power law. There are lots of other distributions, and there's some common distributions that actually look a lot like power laws and can be um, difficult to distinguish. So um, in working with empirical power laws, if you want to make a statement that something is a power law, it's important not only to do a goodness of fit test, but to check out some other alternatives, because maybe it's actually not a power law, but your data is much better described by some other functional form. So this is the um, sort of set of issues that I'll address in this uh, series of videos. So first, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about one of the distributions that's quite common and commonly mistaken for a power law, the log normal distribution. So in this video, I'll introduce the log normal and I'll show you uh, on a couple plots how, uh, how much it looks like a power law in certain uh, situations. Then in an optional video, I'll talk about some statistical techniques one can use to compare the fits you get from different models, log normal, power law, or whatever. And then I'll conclude uh, this sequence with a few thoughts on power laws and compare them more generally with long tail distributions and ask the question whether or not it matters if something is exactly a power law or not. So a log normal distribution is defined by the following relationship. So x, and x is now a continuous and positive variable, or non-negative, I guess, is distributed according to this equation. And um, why is this called log normal? Well, for the following reason. So if x is log normally distributed, And that means that a variable y, even the log of x, is normally distributed. Or another way to say this, if, if y is normal, normally distributed, then the variable e to the y is log normal. So we saw when looking at the central limit theorem that normal distributions arise when we have uh, a whole bunch of random variables added together. Well, log normal distributions arise when we have a whole bunch of positive random variables multiplied together. So um, we have positive random variables multiplied together. together, we get a log normal distribution. So normal distributions are, I think of them as like the default for additive stuff. Log normal distributions are a default or one of several defaults for multiplicative random stuff. I'll talk more about this in the next unit when we look at different processes that generate power laws and log normals. But for now, I just want to um, point out that these are a pretty common occurrence. Uh, it's a, maybe a funny looking formula, but it's not um, a very strange or contrived situation that you would need in order to get one of these. So these are, are well documented. They're pretty commonly occurring. So let's first um, take a look at this. What, what does p of x look like for different values of mu and sigma? So there are two parameters in this uh, distribution. Uh, so here's a plot of a couple of different values. So here's a mu of 0 and a sigma of a quarter. Let's see, this is sigma of 0 0.5. 
this darker line is sigma 0.1. So sigma, uh, similar to standard deviation for the normal distribution, determines how, sort of how wide this curve is. And here, because we're sort of stuck up against this wall, it doesn't, it's not symmetric, but it's skewed off to the right. Um, and then mu, I guess these are all mu equals zero, but in general mu would uh, sort of shift this peak a little bit. But we're maybe going to focus on uh, different, uh, on sigma. So uh, this is a log normal distribution, and they arise from multiplying random variables together. And there are these things with a peak, usually at a pretty small value, and then um, they stretch out uh, in an asymmetric way off to the right. So it turns out that log normal distributions and power laws can look very similar. So here's one illustration of that. I took a power law, let's see, I think I did alpha is, minus, is uh, 2.5. 2 and for the log normal, I had a sigma of 1.3 and a mu of 1. Uh, but it's not hard to kind of get, to get plots of this general shape. So this is a plot of two different distribution functions, the power law, which we've been working with, and the log normal. And this is on the log-log scale. So as we're seeing again and again, the power law is a nice straight line. The log normal is not a perfectly straight line, but um, it's not that curved either. And we've seen that a lot of these empirical distributions, uh, here's, here's one for citations, often have this non-power law region that curves like this. Um, here's one for web hits. Also, we see a little bit of downward curvature. So if we see, um, and we often do, an empirical distribution, these are cumulative distributions, but the same general shape holds, with some curvature like this, we might think, well, it's a power law in a region, or it's an approximate power law. But it also could be really well explained by, and maybe better explained by, a log normal distribution. So if you're going to make a claim that something is power law distributed, you probably also ought to check that it's log normally, if it's log normally distributed. You might get good fits for both, and then you would compare goodness of fit tests to see which was, which was better. Um, let me show you one other plot to illustrate some of the perils associated with uh, power law estimation. So this is another plot from the Closet Chalizi Newman paper. And here um, they drew data, I think it's a small data set, maybe 100 or 200 data points from three different distributions. The power law, with alpha equals 2.5, which we know should give us a straight line on a log-log plot. This is cumulative distribution now. Um, the log normal, which um, should not give us a straight line. It's only the power law that should give us an exact straight line. But the log normal, um, which we've seen, maybe it's going to give something that's kind of straight. And then an old-fashioned exponential um, distribution. And this is for a continuous variable, not a discrete variable like we saw before. And they're plotted here. So this is the log normal the squares, the top curve, or set of data. These circles, those are the power law. And then exponential is here. So with a relatively small amount of data, what this is telling me is that it can be very, very hard to distinguish between these three different distributions. Um, with more data, of course, it becomes easier to distinguish uh, between them. But for small sample sizes, um, these all look, at least to the eye, um, equally straight or equally well approximated by a straight line. So this underscores the importance of not just relying on visualizations and saying, eh, it looks like a straight line. We really need to do careful statistics because um, power laws can be tricky. So in uh, the next video, I'll talk about a statistical approach um, in a little bit of detail, but not too much that uh, will let us, say, compare goodness of fit for uh, power law or log normal or really any two distributions, some ways we might, um, might think about that. So we can attempt, if it's possible, to distinguish between different candidate distributions.